Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings and on today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous sunset beach scene with this lovely couple. So let's get into it! Now the colours you're going to need today are black, purple, blue, yellow, orange and white. And like always we can make any colour from these core colours. And we've got here a burnt sienna canvas which is just a cheapy 30 by 20 centimetre canvas. Now I've painted burnt sienna and all I've done is using a dark blue. I've just created an outline of a couple. I've got a horizon line for the sea and the shore. And all I've done is I've got a bit of chalk and I've got a rough outline of one I want things like the clouds to be. Now as I say those core colours at the beginning are all the colours you need. I have these colours pre-mixed so I've got a warm grey which is just black, a little bit of orange and purple and a tiny bit of white. I have da -da -da, a light purple which is just purple and white. I have a very light blue which is just white and blue. I have a darker blue which is just blue and white again but just a bit more blue and I have these mixtures between orange and yellow. This combination is just orange and yellow. I have yellow and white and a little bit darker with a little less white in it. And all those colours as I say you can just make from the core colours and we have a little bit of black and a little smidge of dark blue which is Prussian blue. Now all we're going to do is we're going to take some of that bright yellow which is just yellow and white and we're going to create the lightest part of our painting. Now the reason I paint my canvases burnt sienna is for this exact reason. You can quite clearly, uh, clearly see here there's marks where the paint isn't thick enough so just by adding a bit darker yellow you can see where the underpainting is shining through with these light colors such as um, yellows whites anything like that you want to paint your canvas at just a darker tone just so you can show up and see where you need to do two coats so all I'm doing now I'm just adding a bit of orange and yellow to that mix and I'm just going around the couple now don't worry if you paint over your couple just like the dolphin tutorial we did the other day the reason I've done the outline first is just so you've got a guideline of where they're roughly going to be but we're going to need to numb up at the end so don't worry if you paint over them by mistake so as I say look you can see clearly that burnt sienna shining through so that's the reason sometimes you've got to do with acrylics a couple of layers because just where you use water with acrylics they get a bit streaky so we're going to add some purple and white to that mixture and we're just going to mix it all in and what that is is where the sun in the sky um, as the light fades away the sky gets a bit cooler but it doesn't go directly into blue so you, uh, light purple so just purple and lots and lots of white is a great bridge tone to make the difference between oranges and blue because if you mix orange and blue together you're going to get a funny green color so by just mixing these colors together and try to get like a pastel tones you will get much more realistic seascapes and sky tones and this bridge color just sort of when you're blending just kind of bridges the two tones together so they're not so harsh for your eyes. So just like normal I'm just trying to teach you how to blend tones so just purple, white and orange and a little bit of the Naples yellow which is just yellow and white and a very very pastel blue now into the corner and while it's all wet we're just streaking it all together don't worry if it mixes together it's just blocking it in don't worry if it's scruffy and streaky that's what paintings are at the beginning and then we're going to use that darker blue in that far left corner just to sort of frame the picture and again look all I'm doing is I'm just blending the tones together and we're going to take that blue and we're going to do the from the horizon down the water effect so again don't worry if you paint over your rough guideline we're going to put it back afterwards but what we're trying to do is we're just trying to create the illusion of the sea coming towards the couple and towards the wash kind of on the beach. So as I say, just block it all in. Don't worry if you've got bits of the burnt sienna shining through. We're going to give it another coat in a minute. But we're just trying to block in where we want everything and where we want things like the darks and the lights, the cools and the heat. 
So as I said in previous videos, things like yellows, oranges, reds are great for heat and things like blues and purples are very great for things like cold and shadows. So what I'm doing is I'm using this very light pastel -y purple tone and a very light pastel -y blue tone. And now I'm going to take some of that sort of Naples yellow, which is just yellow and lots and lots of white. And I'm just going to create where the light is shining on that sort of beach, that watery sort of wet sand. And the same again with that orangey yellow. And all it is, is just a reflection of the sky above. So if you think that sky above is just shining down onto that wet sort of sand, that wash. And then finally I'm going to take some of that warm grey and just add some purple and some orange to it just to warm it up a little bit. And I really want to get a colour that's really really sort of neutral. So what I'm doing, I'm going to just create the illusion of clouds on the horizon. So again, don't worry if it's scruffy, I'm just trying to block it in. Because this tone is very nice and warm, it's got a little bit of orange in it with the purple and the grey, it just kind of bridges the two bits together and that will be where our clouds are hitting the waterline. Now when you're happy with it and it's all blocked in, just dry it with a hairdryer. And what we're going to do now is because we've got all these streak marks and we can see the underpaint shine through with acrylics, we're going to give it another coat. So what I'm going to do, look, if you see here, I'm just adding the same tones over the top. Look how much brighter that is compared to the first coat. So all we're going to do is we're just, now we've got the painting blocked in, we're just going to go over the exact same areas with the exact same colors. And with these colors, it's going to make it look brighter and it's going to look, make it look better blended because we're just going to take our time a little bit more. And we, now we know where everything is, we're just going to block everything in. So all I'm doing is I'm just adding all the same colors over the top. So we've got that purple and white, we've got warmer yellows as the sun gets a bit darker. And then we're adding a little bit of that orangey tone to that mix and again it's very pastel we don't want it too orange or too purpley we want it to be as natural as we can so as I say take your time with the tones get used to blending if you ever feel that you're making a mistake or anything just just um, dry it with a hairdryer and just go over the top with a dry brush and just sort of work your way um, around the paintings just by adding more lighter tones and darker tones you can just fill your way out and things like um, round-headed brushes things like if you've ever got things like a makeup brush that are really really um, soft to the touch they're really really good to blend because they're so light and they're so um, easy to blend you can just use these brushes just to sort of caress the canvas so to speak by just pushing down very very lightly so look just by adding a bit more heat it's getting a bit darker just the further away from that sun so that's going to be a bit more darker in that corner so all we're doing look, I'm just blending it I've got hardly any water on my brush I'm just blending it using this really light brush and just adding a bit more purple to the mix because it's going to get a bit more pastel and a bit darker as it gets further away from the sun. So as you can see, it just bridges into that blue a bit better. I just, just by adding purple, you don't have such a harsh transition when you add things like blue. And as I say, we think of it like a mirror. We're just adding the same tones to the water below the sky. So think of a mirror, think of literally water as just reflecting up what is below it. So look, there we go. Just adding some heat using that orangey tone and just adding a little bit more purple to it just to cool it as it gets further away from the sun. So it's already starting to look a bit more brighter and a bit more less scruffy. But as I say, don't worry if your paints are scruffy to begin with, that is quite normal. So look, we're just going to add some light blue into that corner. Blend them two tones together. 
There we go. And then just add the darker blue into that corner. And just blend them together. And just mix the two tones together just so you don't get such a harsh transition. Simple. Easy peasy. And there you go. Really easy and it's starting to look a lot nicer and a lot brighter than it did previously. So once that's dry, you can just touch it up. You can darken your corners like Bob Ross always says, just so we draw the viewer's eye to the middle. And we'll start making everything look a bit better. So we're just gonna add a little bit more yellow. Just want some more heat. That could be where the sun is sort of blurring out. Off, off our picture, but still providing a nice bit of heat. So all I'm doing, I'm just going over bits and just trying to make them look a little bit brighter and just make the transitions look a little softer to the eye, just so they look more natural. But as I say, these tutorials are very, very quick. This painting literally took me about 45 minutes from start to finish. And normally I would take maybe a day to do a painting. So these are really, really basic skills. There's nothing, there's no real detail in them. But by learning how to do the tones and how to blend and how to do compositions, what I'm trying to teach you is all these little steps that are really, really gonna help you. So when you start adding real detail, photographic detail to your work, and you get better at your drawing and your um, sketching and how to add realism by understanding how colors work and understanding techniques you will be unstoppable and you'll be amazing at it so look we're just getting some of that purple and white and we're going to try to create sort of a sheen effect sort of a kind of a bright look where the water on the shore is kind of shining off against that light but like always same here with some light blue and white and this can be sort of the wash where the waves hit the shore and it makes all the sand wet but as always look we're leaving gaps from the underpainting we're leaving some of the color that we just put down we're not painting all over it because we want some of the that light to shine out from underneath it and what that does is it gives them the illusion of the sun shining down and creating waves and crevices in the sand and the water now i'm going to put everything back now so what we're going to do is we're going to start doing the darks the shadows so i'm taking some darker blue and i'm going to create the horizon line and the waves so this is the part of the ocean because it's far away it's going to be a bit darker and it's going to get lighter as it comes towards the shore and you get sort of the froth of the waves so all we're doing is again we're leaving gaps just to make it look like waves and heads caps of the wave just with the underpainting underneath so all we're doing is we're just using that darker blue now to get a darker blue, Prussian blue is really good. Um, all it is is blue and a little bit of black. So we don't want it too dark, but we're just gonna kind of tr try to get shadows and textures in that water. So this is all the sort of areas that are gonna hit the um, shore and are gonna create shadows and darks. Because we've done all our lights, we've got to do the opposite pole, we've got to do all our darks. So all we're doing is we're just creating little grooves in the sand, little bits and bobs, where the light blue is just hitting the shore and creating the illusion of waves and troughs and bits and bobs. So we're just using that light blue before we put the real darks on we're just going to insinuate shadows and where the light source is just getting a bit darker so all we're doing is just like the bridge tone in the sky we're just creating tones that aren't as harsh so when we add the real darks over the top it looks more realistic now i'm going to take some of that warm gray which is just black white a little bit of orange and a little bit of purple and i'm just going to paint over the clouds and we're going to make them more frothy and we're going to add some floaters to it now as i say we're not going to do any real detail but we're just going to add just sort of the impression of far away clouds just by using that light warm gray 
so again don't worry if you go over your couple we're going to paint them back in all nice and neat so we're just trying to block in and just make our clouds just look a little bit more fluffy a bit more cloud like just add a bit more texture and a bit more realism a bit more things going on now all i'm going to do is just add more gray to that mix so just make it a bit darker and again that area is going to get less light so that's going to be a bit darker than the right hand side because obviously the right hand side has the sun on it so that's going to be a bit lighter so again all this is doing is just creating transitions see how you've got the blue on the left hand side because that area is going to be more in the shade so the man's going to be more in the shade and the lady's going to be more towards the light so all we're doing is we're just trying to match that in the sky and in the water and the sand so it's really really easy and then all we're going to do is we're going to take some Prussian blue which is just blue and black and we're just going to paint back in our couple now a lot of people ask me where I get ideas for my paintings well what I tend to do is I go to beaches and places where I'm on holiday and I take silhouette shots and I try to get as many sunset photos and things like waves and different scenarios that I want to paint but you can always turn your own pictures into silhouettes because you can always take a photo and then make them into say black and white and turn them into stencils so if you take a picture of yourself and someone say holding hands you can turn that into a black and white picture on your computer and all you do is just print it out and you can turn that into a stencil which you can just copy onto a canvas so anyone who's like wants anything to paint or draw and they're finding it difficult to paint and draw well why not take a photo of what you want to paint and draw print it out and create a stencil which you can trace or you can just copy to make a nice composition an easy way if you're struggling for ideas and you can't find the ideas in photos that match your imagination so when you're first learning and you're not great at drawing necessarily Take photos of yourself or other people in positions that you want to make compositions into. Really easy. And you can just print them out and just create stencils and go around the outline of them and you can just learn that way. So all I'm doing is taking that darker blue and we're just again just filling in our couple and we're just also creating more shadow tones onto the wet surface but again because we've left the underpainting we've got light shining through and we've also got that lighter blue what that does is it gives us a mixture of shadows and highlights which just again tricks your eye so all these little techniques I'm teaching you, if you ever stand, say, six foot away from, say, this painting, it will look very real, even though it's not very detailed, it's simply for the colours that trick your eyes. So just use the same tone just to highlight where you think things are going to be like waves, where the sort of water sort of cascades onto the sand. And again, look, we're just leaving gaps. It doesn't really matter. There's no real detail. It's just sort of insinuating using darker tones where things are going to be, it's sort of creating sort of shadows and bumps and grooves into our wet sand. So what we're going to do now is we're going to really darken up so we're going to add black to that mix and these are the real dark so we want to do where say the waves are at their deepest so they're really creating a shadow things like the sand here because it's the furthest away from the light source it's going to be very very dark because that's getting the least amount of light but what also it does because we're going to have our signature in the left hand corner here we want to darken this area up and we also want to kind of frame our picture so we want to darken the corners and get you to focus into the middle like always so by just using the sort of almost black we've got a little bit of blue in that mix we're just doing the real dark impressions of waves and surfaces to create texture and to create shadows where our couples 
shadows are cascading onto that wet surface. So by just using that almost black tone, we're really just adding the sort of dots and bumps and the shadows of where their feet is creating a shadow effect behind them. But by leaving the blue, what it's doing, look, it's, it's making the areas look cooler. So as I keep saying to you, things like blues and purples are really, really good for shadows. Things like oranges and yellows are really, really good for heat. So she's going to paint in her dress. I haven't done the couple very detailed. You can add things like if you wanted to, like streaks of their hair. You could add things like their shirts, their shorts, anything to make it look more real. Obviously, we're just doing a quick tutorial today. But as I say to you, you can always take pictures of yourself and create them into little, little stencils and silhouettes of yourself. If you want to add real detail, if you want to add every strain of hair, every bit of clothing, you know, you can make people bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. So all we're doing now is we're just going to emphasize areas that we want to darken up. So this is going to be the main sort of wave that's hitting the shore. We want to use that dark tone to make it look more 3D now. So we want to just sort of darken areas up, kind of frame our picture, just so this this corner in the left hand side is a lot darker. And then we're going to add some texture to our water. So all we're going to do is we're just going to create sort of ziggy zag sort of shapes, sort of like uh, little crinkle waves to basically give the emphasis of waves and sort of texture in our water. So all I'm doing, I'm just sort of doing like crooked lines with little gaps in between. And all that's doing is I'm letting the paint run out and it's just sort of fading off towards the horizon. And it's going to give the emphasis of texture in things like the sand and the water. So look, just leaving some of the underpainting to shine through just almost like a comic we're just kind of drawing darker tones over the top and it gets darker the further out it gets as it gets more towards the horizon waves get flatter but it gets a little bit darker so that's why I'm just darkening it up as it gets towards the horizon so we're just going to paint some of her hair in. You can tell it's not me and my wife because the man has hair. <laughs> like uh, he's not bald like me. But I thought this could be me and her when we were young. <laughs> so now this black tone, this dark tone, is really starting to make the painting come alive. So as I say, just like the dolphin tutorial we did the other day where we filled them in last, we're just putting the detail back onto the people. So we're just going to make them look a bit more realistic. But as I say, you can add more detail to them. You can do things like the cuffs of their shirt, you can do hair, you can do their nose, their eyes. I'm just going to block them in very, very quickly. But it's just to show you how easily it is to do by just using a really dark tone, got them holding hands just make them look nice and realistic it's already starting to take real shape this picture it's already starting to look really really nice it's only been what 25 minutes really really easy not hard at all so by just using an off black so just adding a little bit blue to it it does make it look not as flat as well I think a lot of people when they do silhouettes they use jet black and then it looks pretty flat on their work. So what I'm doing is I'm using a bit of painting tape and I'm just going to use the darkened Prussian blue that we were using just to emphasize the horizon line. So I'm just making sure there's a nice horizon line, a nice straight one by using tape. I always use tape. It's so easy to use tape. Doing that, just creating the horizon. Just whip it off. For some reason here, I've got a lump. I don't know how I didn't manage that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
use my finger like a pro <laughs> and I'm gonna get some of that cloud color oops a bit too dark not so much of a pro <laughs> and I'm just gonna paint over it that's the good thing about painting you make a mistake easy to fix just retouch it up no bother nothing's ever too harsh you can always just paint over it and fix it but no bother so all fixed and I think just to finish it off I'm just going to take some of the really bright yellow and I'm just going to highlight certain areas just make them look a bit more pungent give it a bit more of a punch just by brightening it up as I say a really quick painting tutorial you can as I say you can use oils or you could use multiple layers of acrylics to highlight your work and make it stand out even more make those shadows darker and make those highlights brighter but we're just gonna do a basic one today so all I'm doing I'm just lightening up areas and just kind of adding a little bit more cloud to the blue just so I don't have harsh transition the same just by using a little bit darker yellow same here on my shoreline in between the shadows just to make it look a bit more brighter so, as I say just copy the sky above onto the water below really easy technique to do just think of a mirror really really easy Just mixing some of that real pastel orange. And again, just kind of create the illusion of clouds into the sky. Just so they can be wispy clouds. Just smearing it with my finger so they're not so harsh. And they can just be sort of the clouds. They get a bit of the sunlight, disappear into the distance. The same here onto the water, just to make it look a little bit brighter. Just a little bit more realistic, a little bit warmer. Just neaten him up, just using a fine liner brush. So just using the darkest tone, just putting the very last details into it. Almost like colouring them in. Just using that really dark tone, just emphasising just where I want the shore and where they are just so they really stand out against that that nice lighter tones as I say just, just feel the painting out go as detailed as you want so just add the very finishing touches and just darkening up that corner because I want people to concentrate on the couple just things like the horizon just darkening up just the very last finishing touches but I think that's looking pretty damn good really really easy tutorial in less than half an hour so let's take a photo and see how it looks wow that looks really really cool really really captures the couple nice the highlights the shadows there's me yay <laughs> looking groovy so we've got this really nice picture as I say it's a really easy one to do and it, you can do this with any picture you've got it's a really really nice one you can do this with your kids just a really nice scene really nice composition so I hope you've enjoyed it we've got plenty more painting tutorials on my channel here at M Stuart Painting so please check them out there'll be one coming up in the corner and please like and subscribe if you haven't already so I'm Murray take care have a nice night bye